Uh, he joins me live on the telephone right now. Can you hear me, Anthony? I can, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with us and all our technical difficulties. I can hear you. Um, let me just start by asking the, the obvious question. How did you find out that Leslie Van Houten had been released, and what was your first reaction? Um, well, you know, I had spoken with the governor's office and attorney general's office for several weeks leading up to it, and they had informed me that she was, that the governor, unfortunately, was not going to file an appeal last Friday. And obviously, I strongly uh, disagreed. But um, and then they informed me that it would be about two weeks before she was released. And then she was released several days after that. So even though it was expected, it still was a kick in, in, in the teeth. And, you know, I mean, there's no way to describe uh, uh, hearing the news. I actually didn't hear uh, of her release uh, except through friends and reporters. Um, I didn't hear from any of the agencies. But, you know, to describe it as gut-wrenching or, or, or mind-numbing or nauseating, it just doesn't do justice to what I'm feeling, what our families are feeling. But um, we, we do feel betrayed, and we are extremely disappointed. I, I can understand. Right? I can understand that because, you know, at first it was a de it was a death penalty. And when that was commuted, it, w it was life. And um, and here we are, you know, 53 years later. I, I do have this question for you. Did you ever get a chance to attend any of the, the parole hearings? And, and if so, what was that like? Uh, actually, my family and I have been involved presently uh, in over two dozen uh, parole hearings in the past two for over the past two decades. And, uh, you know, it, it's. It's a surreal experience to, to be in the room uh, with these people and then also to be in a position where we are fighting for justice. And, uh, and one of the things that was, was telling uh, to our family is that Susan Atkins had said that, you know, when her original death sentence was revoked, that, she, that God had a plan larger than any judgment or, or uh, you know, institution, larger than the hatred that she felt towards her in the room that day. And, you know, our involvement is not focused on the killers. We are focused. We are, we are bound by love. Speak for people who can't speak for themselves. And, you know, so it's really about our family members who are, who are defenseless in their graves. So it's about them, and it's about justice. And, so, you know, in the interest of justice, we, there are more. There are more killers. You, you mentioned Susan Atkins. I, I want to ask you about the series of events because for those who are watching, who you know are wondering who's involved with what, Leslie Van Houten um, was upset that she wasn't included in the, um, the the murder rampage on night one that that claimed the life of your um, of your uncle, but you know she convinced Charles Manson somehow to get included on night two, where um, the LaBiancas were murdered. But the people who did kill your Uncle Jay, that's Tex Watson, he's still in prison, uh, Patricia Krenwinkel, still in prison, and they, I think Patricia has a parole hearing that's coming up in November. D do you have any concerns that this is going to be a repeat, that Patricia Krenwinkel also might be um, walking free? Well, uh, it's certainly the release of uh, Van Houten, one of her cohorts, uh, is potentially uh, uh, impactful in this. But um, what really concerns us, and, and throughout the years, we've observed a kind of a movement that is more concerning, uh, as much as this is a concern, but it, it, it the, uh, what appears to be a, a kind of pro-criminal movement within the CDCR amongst some of the commissioners and with some California legislation that leans in favor of, you know, violent criminals um, at the expense of their victims. And that's the concern that we share as a family, you know, all of our families in the upcoming hearings. You know, Leslie Van Houten's attorney joined me on the program last night, Anthony, and said that she was a model prisoner, spent, you know, the majority of her 53 years uh, educating herself, getting a degree, getting a master's um, in counseling, uh, being a, a tutor and a mentor to other inmates, and that there were plenty of people who were offering her jobs and that she's fully rehabilitated. I would love to ask you what, what you think about that, because it's all fine and dandy for people to see this story who have no connection to it. But when you've lost 
a family member and you hear that, what is that like? I think you make a great point. All those things she did in prison, she should have. That's the very least she can do. But when we look at the profundity, the extreme nature of Leslie Van Houten's crimes, the fact that both her victims were stabbed over three dozen times with a butcher knife and a carving fork, when she behaved so abhorrently at her, at her trial, the nature of her crimes alone, as established in Lawrence, which is law, is so severe that the commitment offense alone is enough to deny parole, regardless of any kind of rehabilitation and uh, time served. But another thing that's very concerning in all of this is uh, with regard to a law, Shaputis, and that is if the inmate shows any lack of uh, an insight into their crime, that that, in essence, is a nexus of current dangerousness. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.